Well, look who it is. It is the kicker for the Houston Texans, a good guy to talk with at all times. It's Kaimi Fairbairn. And first things first, two orders of congratulations for you. One, congrats on the new marriage. And two, congrats on the new contract. It's been a nice offseason for you, Kaimi. Yeah, 2020 has been uh, very crazy for me. Um, you know, I had a lot of big uh, moments for sure with, with my wife now and being an extension and being able to stay in Houston, but also because of this craziness. So um, it's been a wild ride so far. Yeah, and you bring up this craziness. The COVID-19 pandemic has affected so many people in so many different ways. You've pitched in, though. You've rolled up your sleeves in a proverbial sense, and you really did a really cool thing back home in Hawaii at Straub Hospital. Tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, so I partnered with uh, Young's Fish Market. Um, Daniel Young is the owner, and he approached me with this idea of doing, like, this 50-50 Real Hero Challenge to kind of just, you know, it's a way to give back um, in a small way, just showing appreciation for the frontline workers who, you know, put their their families and their lives, um, you know, at risk um, and their health at risk by trying to help the community. So um, I thought it was a great way to, you know, just give back in a small amount and show appreciation. So it was a good deal. Yeah, that is. That's an awesome deal. And, and congrats. And thanks for doing that. It's, it's really a yeah. worthy, worthy cause. So. Are you, where are you right now? Are you back home in Hawaii? Are you in Houston? What's the deal? Um, no, I'm, I'm, I'm in Houston right now. Okay. Uh, got married out there in Hawaii in February and uh, came back after that. Nice. So what's yeah. the training been like? How much has this affected you? Because kicker can be a pretty lonely position as far as getting ready. It's, it's definitely lonely on, on game day at times. But what's it been like for you as far as having to adjust, if, if at all? Um, yeah, adjustments have been, you know, it's, it's strange not being able to be in the in the stadium and getting the work in with, you know, John Weeks and Brian Anger, especially. Um, but, you know, we built a strong foundation from last year and I'm glad we are all coming back and we got Coach Seeley and, and Tracy, um, you know, with the guidance. And I think we have a strong special teams unit. So a veteran group and um, we're going to keep it going this next year. No doubt. And you've been around a few years now and you've seen this transformation. You've seen, you bring up a strong special teams group. It really was outstanding last year and outstanding the year before in 18 in coverage, both kickoff and punts. I mean, mm -hmm. what's been the main difference in your eyes these last two years versus what was going on here in Houston before? Um, I can't really tell the difference because, uh, you know, I haven't been here for too long. But Coach, Coach O'Brien has really preached the importance of special teams. And, um, I mean, you just see it in the results. Um, like, it, it, it changes games, and guys on the team really take it seriously. And even for the guys who don't play special teams, they, they realize the importance of it. Like, um, and, you know, it's, it's important to take the time to during practice, during the week, um, during the offseason, and, um, you know, really focus on that part of the game. For sure. I mean, mm -hmm. every, most games in the NFL are decided by one score, sometimes by a point. Yep. And the Texans definitely were in so many of those last year. You won 10 games. And you can, mm -hmm. you can point in every single game, like, had this special teams play not taken place, I don't know that the outcome was going to be the same. It's got to be gratifying, I imagine, to be a part of that, right? Yeah, I mean, we play a big part in field position. Um, and we just try to help out the offense and defense as much as we can. Um, when our name is called and you know both sides of the ball are very talented but everyone pitches in on special teams and it's a total team effort for sure it is I said it was is a lonely position I only meant when you're you know you're having to <laughs> feel great it's still you still it's part of the job on, yeah you depend on weeks you depend on anger for the hold so I didn't want to yeah. minimize what they did because I do understand that how how important they are to things but no question I, how has this virtual setting been and what's it been like for you guys as specialists? Um, we, we kind of, you know, we, we do our own thing most of the time. Um, I try to get in some kicking sessions on an open field um, when I can. Um, but as far as that, we kind of just stay in the loop. We might throw back some film back and forth um, to try and get another set of eyes on it. But, um, apart from that, it's it's pretty much just staying in touch and making sure everyone's healthy. Pretty fun seeing some of the additions that the Texans have made that are going to kind of help on those core special teams units. You got names like Jalen Watkins and uh, Michael Thomas. They're they're just two of many who 
look to make an impact this year and help bolster what was already you know a strong unit like we've mentioned yeah we have a strong car and um we're making additions so i'm excited to see what those guys have and um i'm sure they're going to bring a lot to the table all right let's play 12 questions and let's start with something you just mentioned you'll go out to a field occasionally and, and stay in shape by kicking do you ever get approached by people because i imagine when you kick a ball it's not like some you know joker who's 45 years old just rolling up and kick I mean, it looks a little different. Do you ever get approached when you're doing this? So far, I haven't. I've, I've kind of just been kicking at uh, this little light pole and, you know, no field goal. So I'm just making making it work for now. Um, but, yeah, I, I mean, it makes you appreciate uh, the facilities for sure and just being around the team. So, um, you know, I, I won't take it for granted from for now. <laughs> All right, let's ping pong around. What do you do? And what are you thinking about in the situations where an, uh, another team calls a timeout before you kick? They call it icing for those that don't know. But what's going through your mind when you get iced? Um, you know, I don't really want to say this out uh, online, but I oh. prefer getting iced. So, I mean, I guess the other coaches will see this now and they won't ice me. But um, I think it's a good time to just collect your thoughts and, you know, take your time with everything. Um, find your target point and just kind of take care of the simple things. That's, that's usually what I try and focus on. Um, you know, the technique and just keeping my, um, my thoughts to a minimum. Okay. So you are from Kailua. That's on the Island of Oahu in the Hawaiian islands. It's I've been there. It's one of the most beautiful places I've ever seen. So for someone who's from Kailua, where do you honeymoon? Because you you're from like the most <laughs> beautiful exotic, you know, one of the most beautiful exotic places in the world. Where do you actually go on a honeymoon? Yeah, we've been spoiled. My wife and I, we grew up in Kailua and, um, you know, the beaches is, you know, second to none. But uh, we like to travel. We like to see different cultures. We we ended up in New Zealand for two weeks and kind of got to explore um, over there. And, you know, we're both Lord of the Rings fans. Um, so I thought it was pretty cool to see where that was all filmed. And that was a lot of fun. Yeah, Lord of the Rings is solid. Uh, I know a little bit more about New Zealand because we were talking offline. I've got four little kids, so they mm -hmm. love Power Rangers, and a lot of the Power Rangers shows have been filmed in New Zealand. So, Oh, really? Kind of, I didn't oh, know yeah. that. So you never I, – I take you didn't come across any uh, – No, I didn't see many Power Rangers. No. Gotcha. So I should have I asked about that. Probably would have been frightening to, to see that in person because <laughs> those are some weird costumes. Uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> As someone from Hawaii – Spam musubi, where do you stand on that? Do you like it? What, what, what are your thoughts? I love it. Um, I've been eating it since, you know, as far as I can remember. It was always a after-game snack, you know, and you had the oranges during halftime and then spam musubis uh, after the game, and it always hit the spot. I know what it is. I got to cover a couple Pro Bowls when I was there, and every morning on the way to practice, we'd get a couple of Spam musubis and a Diet Dr. Pepper, and that would be breakfast. Ooh. explain what a spam musubi is for those who don't understand all right so you got your base which is white rice gotta have the white rice uh -huh. and then um you have a can of spam and usually you cook both sides put a little uh, soy sauce on there um plant that onto the rice and then you get seaweed and wrap it around and um it makes for a delicious treat it's almost like spam sushi right yeah yeah, yeah. exactly and do you miss it? I mean, how much do you get a chance to get it here? Or does anybody serve it? Um, no, I have. Or actually, there's a couple of uh, poke spots that, that serve it. But honestly, homemade is some of the best. You know, fresh rice, fresh spam, and then the seaweed, is, it's, uh, it's good at home for sure. That must be out of this world because the spam musubi I had was really good. And I was getting it from convenience stores. So I can't <laughs> imagine what homemade spam was, spam musubi. Um, all right, moving on. What do you miss most about this whole quarantining slash shelter in place, et cetera, et cetera? Um, I mean, definitely being able to see everybody and, you know, not worrying about like just contact. Like, you know, you see a friend and, you know, you don't want to shake hands. It's kind of just a wave right now. Yeah. Um, so I think it's just the human contact, but uh, I think it's important to look at the positives, you know, just being able to kind of simplify things right now and really, um, you know, your family and your health come at um, the most important things. So 
it's it's good to you know go back to the basics i think so try to spin it in a positive light yeah and it's probably cool as a newlywed you're spending more time around your wife i'm guessing than you normally would so it's kind of cool yeah. I'm, I'm assuming mm -hmm. yeah. definitely okay what show have you binged during this pandemic oh man uh we've been watching ozark yes yeah that one's i i finished it that was uh so good in it yeah it's it's an amazing show for sure must watch yeah so ozark is the one anything else ozark um what else do we watch i think we're gonna start yellowstone pretty I've heard soon that's good yeah i've heard that's good. yeah i haven't started it yet but i'm looking looking for that one um and then the office that's like, it's like you know turn it on and kind of mindless and laugh never lose never lose yep. much in office that's for sure yep okay who on the texans speaking of the office is most similar to dwight schrute oh sheesh i mean dwight's one of a kind you can't really <laughs> compare him to anybody like uh, do we have any farmers on the team i don't even know yeah jacob or excuse me aj moore is a farmer there, okay, AJ Moore. That's who I'm. That's who I'm going with him. Chicken Both farmer, farmers. whereas Dwight did beets, but I guess that's yeah. the closest. All right, AJ Moore <laughs> equals Dwight Schrute, according to <laughs> be the tweet oh, in the video. <laughs> <laughs> oh, geez, sorry, AJ. <laughs> All right, you're 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 an awesome soccer player growing up. So, do you have a favorite soccer player, like all time? Who is it? Terry Henry. Okay. That was that was my favorite. I grew up watching Arsenal um, when they were, you know, the team to beat. Um, they had Patrick Vieira. It was like 0-2 where they pretty much won everything. Mm -hmm. um, had like an unbeaten season or something. And Thierry Henry was my favorite player. He was a forward and unreal. Yeah, unreal he, he was amazing. He was amazing. Yep. Uh, short Thierry Henry story that actually has to do with the Texans. So – Texans arrived in London this year for the game against the Jaguars on Friday. Mm -hmm. I got there with uh, Tyler Sutarth, one of our photographers, videographers. We got there Tuesday afternoon to kind of document the week that was and you know, yep. connect with fans, all that stuff. And on Thursday, we did a tour of Wembley Stadium, an official tour. We got to shoot some shots. It's really cool. The cheerleaders tour over there. And as we're walking out to get an exterior shot, they made us kind of go around because there was another shoot going on. And I could tell as I was walking up that there, that was the European Cup, the big silver cup that the teams get when you know, they win the European Cup. And there's a guy standing there. And as I walked closer, we're about, they kept us about 20 yards away. But as I got sideways with him, it was Thierry Henry standing in front of Wembley shooting. Because so, I guess they, that was where it was going to be this year, but it got canceled because of the pandemic. So, oh, okay. Yeah. Did, uh, did you say hi? No. You no. Were, it, it was like, don't talk. talk. Don't uh, say anything, leave him alone. He had like yeah. a group of like people around him. So, I mean, those, be... those are always hard, man, especially when you see someone you always admire. Oh, yeah. You want to say hi, but it's like you got to be respectful too. Would have loved so. to, but yeah, it was just yeah. no chance. No chance. Yep. Starting. All right. Um, what Houston Texans player do you think would make a good soccer player? You can't say yourself, obviously. Um, I mean, Brian, Brian, you know, he kicks a lot of balls kicks for a living so i gotta go him i gotta throw out justin reed though yeah i've seen him him boot uh football quite a few times and he's not bad too so i'll throw him in that pot well. yeah he was he was really good jaleel adai is not with the texans anymore but he he played for one of the like under 19 usa teams as well so he was no good way growing up out, uh, outside of tampa wow i didn't know that yeah uh-huh that's, that's why cool. you do this that's why you do a drews dozen i Tell you about yeah, Terry Henry. Tell right you about mm -hmm. other guys. That's what you learn and get out of this. Uh, who's your all-time favorite NFL player? NFL player. Hmm. Um, I really liked Ladanian Tomlinson growing mm -hmm. up, uh, running back for the Chargers. He, you know, he was always, you know, he was the closest thing I had to uh, to home as far as a team. Right. So uh, I, I enjoyed watching him growing up. What has been your loudest NFL experience? Ooh, it's a close tie between uh, New Orleans last year uh -huh. and the Seahawks in 2018. Yeah, 17. 17, okay. Yeah, yeah those, those two stadiums were pretty amazing. Um, and then last year, the Buffalo game, 
uh, at home, that was that was pretty incredible too. It was it was a different kind of energy in there. Yeah, that second half. Oh man, that yeah. A lot of us aged about fifteen twenty years in that second yeah. half to over. Yeah, that was a that was one for the memory bank for sure. <laughs> Who's your funniest teammate? Funniest teammate. Um, uh, that's a good question. I mean, I, I'm locker mates with Dylan Cole. And uh, he, he sits right next to me, and he's always cracking jokes, um, especially, like, in odd times, too. It's, it's funny. Um, so I'd go with Dylan Cole. Okay, Dylan Cole's a good one. Mm-hmm. All right, how old were you, and how did you realize that you could probably go pretty far in life as a kicker? Um, it started pretty late. I mean, it kind of – I didn't start kicking till 10th grade in high school. And, um, it wasn't until maybe junior year, end of junior year after my, after my season that I thought I could take it to the next level in, in college. Um, so I, you know, I took that step and got a scholarship and went to college and then, you know, it was just taking it year by year, um, one kick at a time. And, uh, I found myself my senior year of college kicking well. And, um, I guess when, I finished that year I was like oh maybe I can be an NFL kicker um but honestly I've, I've just taken it year by year um it was never a moment where like this is this is going to be my profession um right. it, yeah it's really worked out for me for sure all right final that question happened. what's mm-hmm. the last thing and when was it that you cooked oh um I cook all the time actually uh I made some breakfast this morning. Yeah. What'd you make? Yeah. Uh, a little, some breakfast tacos. Had some eggs. Um, put some peppers in there, red peppers, a little jalapenos in there. Nice. Some cheese. Yeah. It's my go to. You're pretty consistent with the rest of your teammates. Most of them cook on a fairly regular basis. However, there are a few exceptions. He's now a former teammate, but Taiwan Jones had not cooked in three years on Mother's Day when I asked this question. So it had been like what? three years ago on Mother's Day when he had last cooked. So, yeah, you, you, you're doing fine. You're in the majority here. So Wow. I wonder how he does that. I don't know. I'm guessing yeah. a lot of like Uber Eats and eating at the facilities. And maybe he's got a special lady in his life that's cooking for You know, there's, there's yeah. all sorts of ways. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, Kaimi Fairbairn, it is so awesome to catch up with you. I'm glad you're doing well. Congrats on what's been an awesome offseason, and we're really looking forward to seeing you kick and split some more uprights in 2020. Yes, sir. Sound good? Can't wait. Can't wait to see you guys too, man. You guys uh, take care, stay safe, and um, see you when I see you. Yes, sir. Take care. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to know when we post new content.